On our Change Maker segment today, we have a man who stood in the gap. He is all about menstrual hygiene. People call him the period man. That's the hashtag. And he's proudly, proudly taken it upon himself to just be the man that talks about this and kills the taboo, the myths around this conversation shouldn't be hard out here because we're having it on live TV this morning. Welcome to the show, James. Thank you so much. Uh, Kindly introduce yourself, Demeni. period man Okay, uh, kwa kiswele ama kizungu? Yoyote. Okay, sasa. So, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, my name is James Atito. Yes. I come from Mombasa. Mm -hmm. I work at a community-based organization uh, called Stretchers Youth Organization, mm -hmm. uh, which we founded with my colleagues in 2011. Okay. And we work around uh, issues to do with uh, community awareness and uh, advocacy. Mm -hmm. on uh, sexual reproductive health and rights okay. as a whole mm -hmm. and matters of uh, good governance. Ah, yes. all right. So how did your campaign on menstrual hygiene come into play? You were doing a uh, community-based kind of, you know, um, activism, but then you became particular and you chose one path. Yes, okay. Uh, so at Stretchers, I said that we started in 2011. Yes. Uh, but we've been implementing a number of programs mm -hmm. and uh, projects yes. that are donor funded. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometime back in 2016, mm -hmm. there was a project that we were implementing with one of our partners okay. uh, on introducing menstrual cups to a number of girls in Mombasa. Yes. So part of the beneficiaries were young girls that we were working with. And one of them was my younger sister mm -hmm. that was introduced to menstrual cup. Mm -hmm. So I became interested uh, on this commodity that is being introduced to my sister. Yeah. Actually, it was at that time that it hit my mind that something like periods exist. Oh. Okay. You just lived your life before that oblivious to the fact that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I started doing research on what menstrual cup is and what is it all about. So that's when I started coming across a lot of information around periods and menstrual hygiene. Okay. So... That continued. Then, middle of the implementation, there was need to have men engagement in uh, breaking the uh, stigma around menstrual health. Mm -hmm. And then I asked myself, why can't I be one now that my sister is using the, uh, the cup? Yes. So I decided to now, uh, the, with the information that I had researched, yeah. to start uh, um, sensitizing my fellow men on the importance of engaging the conversation to break the silence mm -hmm. so that men can engage. But it didn't stop there. How did that even go, James? You know, like, <laughs> um, it wasn't a conversation even girls would have in public, yes, you know. Yes. And even when you got your period in school, you'd be hush-hush. Sure. And most of the times, even in school, if the boys noticed that maybe you messed your dress, then you'd be made fun of. Sure. Now, here is a man who's looking to sensitize or talk to other men about periods. Yes. Did they receive you <laughs> in the <laughs> beginning? Were they looking at you awkward? Well, it, uh, it, it looked like uh, I was doing something that is... Very odd. Uh, very awkward. Yeah. And um, that, that went on, and it is still going on, yes, even up is. to now. I can imagine. Uh, whenever I meet uh, new people mm -hmm. who don't really understand what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. they feel that um, it is not something for men to talk about. It's inappropriate. And... Uh, the time that reached for me to start uh, calling myself the period man, yes, it was actually inspired by uh, an incident I went, I, I, I saw in in Turkana, okay, back in 2019. Mm -hmm. I had gone there to capacity build girls at uh, Kaku, Kakuma refugee mm -hmm. camp. Mm -hmm. So a day before my session, we were walking along the road, and um, when it rains, the Gully erosions, they, they call them the laggers. Mm -hmm. So I met about seven girls. They were seated on the laggers. It was late in the evening, around seven, mm -hmm. and it was, um, it was raining a bit. So I asked the person we were working with, what are these girls doing here? And it is at night. Then she told me that those girls were menstruating, and they're not allowed to sit in their homesteads because it is a taboo, especially where men are. Then the next morning... <sighs> I was having a session to demonstrate the use of menstrual cups. Then a girl asked me, why do you talk about periods? Are you a period man? So when I went back home, I thought of how can we help the girls that I saw 
seated on the soil. Yeah. Then that name came back to my mind. And I just told myself, well, can I be the period man? Yes, from today I'll be the period man. And you became. And that is how I started. I started uh, sharing uh, my stories on uh, a Facebook page. Yeah. And that's how the name began. I'm thinking about the girls. I think I was left there for a bit. Mm -hmm. Periods go on from maybe three, four, five, seven days sometimes. Yes. These girls will be sitting there all this while until their period is done. Yes. And uh, actually, if it is food, they are brought there. Where are the mothers? The, uh, it's in the, the homes. They are in the homes. It is, it is something that... Uh, it is not new to the community. Okay. So it's, it is it's the norm. New, it's new to us who are hearing <laughs> it from this other end of the world. Yes. But it's something that is happening and it's because they do not have menstrual education, hygiene. It, I'm just imagining all kinds of things. That is, the, that is the gap. That is the gap. The gap we have as far as menstrual hygiene management is concerned. Yes. Is the access to accurate and correct information. Okay. And... Um, all these taboos, are, 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 we, we can say that they are influenced by the culture mm -hmm. and the lack of the information. Okay. Because when they are seated there, it's not that they are using any kind of menstrual product. No. 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 It is blood to the soil. Yes. Okay. And that comes with a lot of infections. Yes. And it is because the people don't even understand how that... Uh, Cycles, them. Yeah, uh, how they, that affects them. They don't. Because for those five, uh, five days, these girls will have to miss school. Yeah. They will have to miss uh, very important functions. They even uh, lose the uh, social uh, gatherings that they, they, they are used to. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't go to functions. So and they even when they go there. back to school, it's like everybody knows why you missed school. Yeah, sure. So it's, it's, it's also been looked at, oh, she missed school because, you know, and then the boys were always, like, it's just... So what happened then? Because now you've d you, you've went through that, you saw that, and you have now decided I will be period man. What next? Because it's not a journey that you can walk alone. That's true. There's so many girls who need help. That's true. And um, you remember last year, uh, the Minister of Health uh, through the CS launched the Menstrual Hygiene Management Policy. Okay. That is supposed to run from 2019 to 2030. Okay. Okay. And um, there are strategies that are made. And in that strategy, it talks about multisectoral approach. What is and that? And multisectoral approach, uh, it simply means that it is not something for one person to do. Yes. It's about different stakeholders, uh, different government uh, ministries coming together. Because menstrual health touches on uh, issues of water and hygiene, mm -hmm. the WASH program mm -hmm. in schools. Uh, it touches on health issues mm -hmm. because it is a, a reproductive health issue. Yes. It touches on education because when girls miss a class, then it also affects the performance mm -hmm. of the girls. Uh, it, it, uh, it touches on matters of gender equality because there, it comes with discriminations on it uh, because uh, specifically we expect that uh, when girls uh, are menstruating, then there are a number of issues, there are a number of conditions that are uh, involved along the cycle. Mm. So it comes with a lot of uh, sustainable development goals mm. around it. Uh -huh. uh, it affects a number of them. So it does not, uh, it is not something that you can just put to one ministry. So it needs different stakeholders uh, for us to get sustainable programs around it. Okay. And that is what we talk, uh, that's why we talk about multi-sectoral approach. Uh. So there is something that an individual can do uh, like what I'm doing, yes. uh, there is uh, something for uh, the media stations, mm -hmm. like what you're doing now, yeah. putting the information to the limelight so mm -hmm. that people are able to know and learn from it. So everyone is involved as far as menstrual hygiene management is concerned. Okay. Yes. Um, we're going to take a very short commercial break right now, but you can send in all your questions, share your stories with us. What was the craziest thing you had to do during your menses? And what was the reception? Did you ever get, did you ever get body shamed? Did you ever get, um, you know, shamed just because you are a girl and you're going through your menses? 
please send in all of that. Triple one, triple four, triple one. We have a few things here that uh, James will definitely be showing us how to properly wear a pad, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> so do not go too far. This is Full Circle with Mikali. Welcome back to Full Circle. On our Change Maker segment today, we have James Atito, who is the period man, has dedicated his life to just create awareness around menstrual hygiene. And he came with paraphernalia here that I just want to see what that is all about. But please remember to send in all your questions. Triple one, triple four, triple one. That is our SMS line. Switch TV KE on Instagram, Switch TV Kenya on Facebook. James. Yes. Now, Nahadi Kuna chats. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's get to it. So, um, we're talking about menstrual hygiene management. Yes. There are a number of issues that we don't need to forget about. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to focus on uh, uh, some aspects of it. Okay. And the first one, which is the foundation, is access to accurate information. That's true. Okay? Because it is through the information that will break the, uh, the, the myths and the misconceptions around menstrual health. Uh, number two, we need to talk about access to uh, menstrual products, uh, facilities, and services. Okay. When I talk about facilities and services, uh, we, we, we look at uh, where is, is this girl supposed to go and change the pads, for example. Mm -hmm. Do we have access to clean water? Do we have access to uh, soap? Uh, can these girls get private place for changing yeah. if they want to? Yeah. Uh, like right, right now, uh, we have ladies in the studio for yes. example yeah what happens if they have the periods just start mm. and they are uh, and they're they're on set maybe mm. they are they're uh, manning the cameras yes. yes so do they have that safe space to go and change so these are some of the facilities that we talk about okay. when addressing menstrual health okay we also talk about issues to do with um, period pain management yeah there are a number of girls who suffer from a number of conditions that yeah. I'm going to uh, to demonstrate using the chart. Okay. So whenever we're talking about menstrual products, people know about the disposable sanitary pads. Yes. Which is very expensive mm. to some people. That's true. Okay. The cheapest now in the market goes at around 50 shillings. Mm. But that is not cheap to everyone. No. Okay. So whenever we go uh, to sensitize the girls, we have varieties of menstrual products. Okay. Ranging from the disposable sanitary pads. Okay. Okay. Yes. That they are aware of. Mm -hmm. But we tell them, mm -hmm. well, you are aware of this. Yes. But they are also reusable products. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That you can wash, uh, hang on the sun. Okay. Dry, then reuse for a number of months as you gather money to get another package. Okay. okay. Then, other than the pads, there are products like the tampons. Yeah. That also, we also sensitize the girls. Okay. okay? You might think that this is a, a porch for my, uh, for, for carrying money. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> it's not. Okay. Okay. So we, we sensitize them also on the tampons. Okay. Uh, because there are some who also find them uh, suitable to use during menstruations. Okay. And these are the menstrual cups that uh, we're talking about. Yes. They're reusable. Yeah. Is, like things like menstrual cup can be reused for 10 years. Yeah. So someone uh, would not uh, be stressed about getting money for pads so every that month. is for the long term. Long term, yes. And you, all you need is just clean water. Yes, for clean you to, water. And play a space for you to be able to change and empty the cup. Yes. Okay. And accurate information on how to keep the hygiene part of it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so most of people always criticize the, 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 the reusable product mm -hmm. simply because, one, they are not comfortable using them. Mm -hmm. So when someone is not comfortable using a product, then they also think someone would not be comfortable using them. Okay. And therefore, they don't even want to talk about them. But what we do is we give the information. We let girls choose for themselves yes. what they want to use. Okay? Other than the menstrual products that we know, we uh, add to the fact that the pads cannot be held without a panty. Yes. So we also tell them, that it is important for girls to have panty and even carry a spare if possible. Yeah. Because at times 
girls can soil the panty to a level that they cannot even feel comfortable to washing. Mm -hmm. There are some people who don't like touching the blood. Mm. So what happens? You throw the panty, wear another one. Okay. okay? And we know that there are some who cannot even afford uh, to, to be buying the pad, the yeah. panties and the pads. Yeah. So we also train them on how to make the, the panties. Like this one, this one can be made uh, by... Ah, this is yes, actually yes, we train, stitched. Yes, we train them to make the panty. Mm -hmm. And it is designed to um, a level that it can, you can even insert the pad. Okay. Okay? Yes. And hold. Okay. So these are things that girls can make mm -hmm. uh, by the training that we, we give them. Okay. Other than that, we talk about pain management. Mm. A lot of girls use, say, uh, painkillers. A lot of them. I think we yes. had a conversation and I discovered some very strange medications that yes. people take. Yes. Yeah. You, you'll be surprised that some feel, so, some don't even know that the uh, the womb or where menstruation happens yes. is different from the stomach that food enters. Ah. So they get medication for the stomach, but oh. not for the, the crumbs. Okay. Okay. They go for uh, drugs like, say, uh, tumbo seed. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is for the running, maybe the running stomach. Yeah, which is not which what is you not, need. Which is not, it is not what you need. Yes. Okay. So we give also information on how to manage period pain. Okay. And we do not forget to talk about the menstrual disorders that are there. Yeah. We have a number of girls. One in every 10 uh, girls mm -hmm. suffer from endometriosis, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have cases of fibroids. And that's where we use this chart. Because this chart... Uh, identifies a number of disorders okay. ranging from ov ovulatory dysfunctions to bleeding disorders, uterine adenomyosis, Is and any, any. all this. Are you explaining <laughs> one by one? Because now even I would like to know. Okay, so we, we have a number of girls who talk about heavy, heavy bleeding. Yes. And they think that it is very normal to have period heavy pain, flow. Mm. heavy flow. Mm. They, feel that it is very normal to have them. Mm -hmm. But you're telling them that it could be either of this uh, okay. disorder. Okay. Okay. It mm. could be a bleeding disorder mm. that is making uh, you to have that heavy bleeding. Okay. So the challenge that we always face is once you inform girls of these challenges, then they want a place to go maybe to, to, do, to do diagnosis. Yes. Which is not available. Yeah. It is rarely available. Mm -hmm. And the places where they're available it is also very expensive, expensive to do the diagnosis. So it becomes inaccessible for girls to get these services. Mm. And that is what uh, is part of the menstrual health policy. That through the multi-sectoral uh, approach, yeah. we are able to now have uh, places or facilities that can offer maybe this kind of services. Though it is a long process, it, yeah. is, it, it is a process to have partners who will be able to offer maybe pro bono diagnosis to girls. So, maybe due, due to time, I might be able yeah, to I explain. Yeah, I understand. I understand. But, but mm -hmm. what is important is that heavy bleeding could be as a result of either of these conditions. conditions okay. Which is very important for girls to now just get diagnosed to know what is the cause for this heavy bleeding mm -hmm. and even what is the cause for missing periods. We have oh, a number okay. of them. Okay. okay. Yeah. A girl misses periods for two, three months. Mm. Why is that so? So we get to give them information that it could be due to an illness that they're having. It yes. could be due to a uh, very high level of stress. Mm. Uh, it could be as a result, maybe they're breastfeeding. Yeah. So some don't even have that information that maybe excessive stress can make you miss your period. Your period. So they get worried. Yeah. They go for pregnancy tests, ATC. So us is to provide the accurate information that we feel girls need to know. Mm -hmm. For them to um, want to live, to live, to live, to live in harmony with themselves, with themselves, and, and understand what are the dynamics around menstrual hygiene management and what is happening to my body. I saw you with a hot water bottle as well. Yes. Uh, so, f as, as you can tell us more about that, as a uh, way to you know handle our cramps yes. during that time. So, w when you go to the communities, this is a very new thing. Very new, yes. Which is not supposed to be the case. Mm. Uh, most girls are used to uh, using the, um, uh, 
the normal bottle the plastic bo bottle the plastic bottle I, I think in in, in high school that this wasn't there back in the day so it, yeah. it usually would be the plastic bottle put in hot water yes. then wrap it with like a towel or something uh -huh. and then just place it on your tummy yes yeah so you see th those are those are some of the say the the long term or <laughs> the, the conventional ways yeah. of uh, managing period pain yeah but girls also need to know those who can afford this kind of products are there yes they are okay Mm -hmm. so that they are able to help themselves during the pain. Okay. But most importantly is that there is role of men at household level. Many times we talk about the government provi providing services. Yes. But what can we do at our own household to support our girls? Yeah. Uh, when households have information that uh, maybe my sister menstruates every month, then I don't need to wait for the government to bring my sister's pad. No. Okay? I need to budget for this. When I'm going to buy my packet of unga, my packet of uh, milk and sugar, then I also need to know that I have a girl in the house mm. who will also need pads, mm. who will also need painkillers, who maybe uh, her period comes with uh, a lot of pain, yeah. might need even hosp hospitalization, mm. needs diagnosis. So when we have all this information, it becomes easy to know when to support and where and how we need to normalize this conversation yes. and that men can be part of it as well yes. because we have single daddies out there who are raising beautiful girls and i think there's a lady a while back who shared her story about how she had a fast uh, period and it was just dad who was there and it's just like your dad this is what is happening and the dad was comfortable to go in and get but now couldn't get into the lady's toilet so waited for a lady who was getting in mm -hmm. it's like my daughter is in there could mm -hmm. you kindly uh, show her how to use it. <laughs> so we need to normalize this conversation. It's not a taboo anymore. Sure. It shouldn't and be. That is what people need to know. Once we uh, normalize the conversation, uh, we can talk about periods anywhere, anyhow. Yes. Uh, the same way we discuss what is my favorite food. Yeah. Is the same way ladies should also discuss what is my favorite menstrual product, mm. for example. Mm. And when they share, it becomes easy to know how to even handle some of these uh, disorders. Yeah. Uh, we have... Um, uh, a number of institutions that do a lot of amazing work, mm -hmm. like we know of the Endometriosis Foundation of Kenya that is yes. doing a lot of uh, information sharing around endometriosis. Mm -hmm. We have Fibroids uh, Association, uh, PICOS. All these associations provide that social support that girls need during um, menstruation to just over also just um, handle the mental uh, problem that comes with it mm -hmm. because once you have a condition that needs uh, this kind of care, for yeah. example, eh, mm. it, it comes also with some uh, need for counseling. That's true. To cope up with uh, the, the stress that it, it brings. Yes. yes. We have a couple of questions for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Period Man, what are the challenges you face and what techniques you use to make girls open up to you? you yet you are a man. So, you know, getting girls to be comfortable to share their stories with you, how does that happen? Well, to me, the challenges I face. Yeah. <laughs> one, uh, the greatest challenge is, um, which I always look at it as an opportunity. Okay. Because um, people coming to my inbox, mm -hmm. and some even, some even women, telling me to stop talking about periods. Allah. So I look at that as an opportunity to tell them that, even male nurses don't need to get pregnant for them to support women mm. in labor. Yes. <laughs> okay? Yes. So what I need is just accurate information to disseminate to you. Absolutely. And I've never had a problem uh, getting girls open up to me. Actually, it is always as easy as as soon as I mention or I ask a girl, what kind of menstrual product do you find comfortable to use? At first, they will be withdrawn. They'll be like, what? Why is this man asking me yes. about menstrual product? Yes. But when I tell them, no, it is normal. I mean, you always menstruate every month. Yeah. Why is it difficult for you to tell me? You don't have the to be kind shy of, about yes, it. The kind of product to use. Yes. So once they internalize that, then they open up. They okay. tell them, oh, well, me, I'm comfortable using this kind of pad. <laughs> I'm not comfortable using this because uh, this irritates me. This yeah. Way. So it has never been a problem 
getting girls entirely. Close, yes. Plus, I think you knew what you were getting yourself into. <laughs> of course, I knew it was not easy. <laughs> it was not easy. I, I so knew you were there was ready. a lot of stigma around it. Yes. But I decided that that is the way I would go because yeah. there is need for men to engage in this conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a, another one here. Sasa Mwikali, I'm happy guys teaching girls Julia pads. My mom gave me always a kanisho to me. Guess what? I put it. I put it, I put it gum Jew. <laughs> so they put it the other way around. That's very common. Yeah. <laughs> so ikafika time ya kutoa, it was very painful for yes, her. Yes. And remember, at, a, at that moment, I jamsaidia kwa sababu ameka yo saidia gum. Ya gum Jew, jamsaidia. I jamsaidia kwa sababu even the absorption has not even Happen. happened. Okay. So it's something that you also do to teach them how to wear it properly. Yes, I teach them how to wear the pads properly. Mm -hmm. And it is, we, cannot, we cannot even put the mistake to the parents. Mm -hmm. Because some parents also don't know. Mm. Uh, some of our parents grew up knowing that the only product may be ni cotton. Yeah. Uh, some used the old clothes. Yes. So these pads, zimekuja mm. tujuzi. Some of them don't even know how to use them. Okay. So we can just encourage them to be thirsty for the information, information. so that they are able to yeah. train the girls. That's true. As, as they grow. Okay. Yeah. Aha, ndio huyu, tukwapi. Tuko wapi kwa SMS. Ah, here we go. Hi, Mkali, show ni tamu sana. My, menstru my menstrual ilikuja nikiwa shule and I was in, in, in form, no, the same as you what, in a mixed school day and boarding and a boy noticed and he was the one who helped me. Uh -huh. We live for such stories. K kudos for the boy. Yeah, kudos <laughs> for the boy. Hi, is it normal for someone to have back pain when she's uh, having her period? Back pain? That is uh, one of the uh, say effects mm. or uh, uh, like symptoms. Symptoms and mm. was Yeah. There are some who have the back pain. Mm -hmm. Some have even um, pain in the thighs. Yes. Uh, some have the stomach. Mm. Some even have headache. Yeah. Uh, painful breasts. Uh, there are a number of challenges that comes with the periods. Yeah. That we, we really need to just. Talk about ties, yes. and, and let people know that it's, do you think that we should get, uh, and this is me just being pokey pokey, <laughs> <laughs> that we should get time off when it's that time of the month that all women should actually just be like, you know what, it's fine. Go home for those seven days. Uh -huh. and there's a company I saw in Tanzania that is actually doing that. Maybe just one company among like a hundred. But what do you think about that? Well, um, sometimes, sometimes I say it, it is important. Okay. It is important because it depends also with how the individual feels. You see, there is no limit or a benchmark yeah. for period pain. No. That we can say that Mwekali's pain is this much, mm. so yours also should be this much. No. There is no limit. And it is only you that knows how painful it is. Yeah. Even me, I don't know. I mm. only depend on the information you gave me for me to make that decision. And even in the institution where I'm working at yes. Stretchers, eh? Yeah. Uh, we have female uh, employees who at times come. Now they know the period man understands Aye, our situation. period man will get it. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so. my role at the organization is actually administrative. Yes. So they would come and, ah, HR and I So uh, sometimes it is important to give girls time off, off. Okay. to go and just... Uh, and it's not everyone. We're not saying that every woman out there goes through the pain. It depends no. with the need. It, yes. yes. Um, uh, say hi to James. That is Rosie from Naivasha. Uh, hi, Mukali. I'm Jane from Nairobi. When I was in third seven, I got it. I was so embarrassed because everyone laughed at me. And that is why we are here today to just make mm -hmm. this conversation as open as possible and to normalize it, that it's okay, that it happens. Yes. Um, which drug can I use for cramps? That is Maureen. Uh-huh. Uh, there are a number of drugs. Yes. And actually, I always uh, like uh, referring girls to one. It is important to first know what is your medical history. Because yes. there are some drugs that you cannot just use if you are having uh, some kind of uh, medical conditions. Yeah. So it is always difficult to pinpoint a specific drug mm. for girls to use. But there are some who uh, find even Panadol extra to be surfacing the pain. Yeah. There are some who use Bascopan uh, Plus. Uh, there are some who use um, uh, some Ponson, injection. Okay, yeah, so it's a lot. It, it's it's a matter of the same way you find a menstrual product suitable for you. Yes, it's also the same way you can also identify uh, what, what kind works. of 
uh, and pain maybe killer some people do not relieve. even need painkillers. Maybe a hot yes. water bottle. A hot water work. bottle can surface yeah. that. So yes. just. Watch any some SMS ya mwisho. Nasikia time yetu imeisha. Hi, I am Esther Mimi nikiwa high school nilipitia hard time sana. I used tissue sometimes na darua nguo na tumia nilikuwa na mess up to watu wakienda games misingeenda joy fiat kucheza tissue isianguke. So at least that was then. I hope you're doing something to help another lady to uh, to know that kuna kitu unaweza kuna mtu unaweza ongelesha kuna kitu kingine unaweza tumia to normalize the conversation kabisa. Ya mwisho kabisa. I'm Jacinta from Dandora. Msia kidai ku volunteer kusaidia Magaldem na hiyo organization ana login wapi? I'm 19. So ninge dai ku help us. So how can they be part of the program and volunteer in their different parts where they come from? Well, the good thing about menstrual health, we have a number uh, a number of partners or stakeholders who are doing a lot of work. Yes. Uh, if if you are living for example in Nairobi Dandora, we have youth organizations within Dandora within okay. Nairobi that are doing this kind of uh, awareness. Mm -hmm. In Kibra we have the superb organization mm -hmm. that is organizing for example the menstrual cycling event mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow. Okay. Uh, ah please tell us about tomorrow before you go. Oh my god, I almost forgot. Yes. Quick like in 30 seconds. Tomorrow is menstrual hygiene day. Yes. And we have a number of partners who have uh, mobilized resources to just create that awareness and break the stigma around menstrual health. Yes. And in Nairobi we shall be having uh, a number of stakeholders meetings. Uh, in the morning we will be in Kibra for the menstrual cycling mm -hmm. uh, just to break the silence okay. and engage okay. men okay. in this conversation. Yeah. In the afternoon we will be having stakeholders meetings. Okay. Just to normalize <laughs> the conversation. <laughs> Social media handle the watu wakuja directly kukuliza hizi maswali. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, the period man. The period man. Yes. Thank you so much for coming through. Asante James. sana. And you're doing such an amazing job. Thank you. We're taking a very short commercial break. I'm so sorry, time just flies when you're having really good conversations. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs>